Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about the five mistakes that most traders make. If you're new here, I trade futures. ES and NASDAQ has taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. It took lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned, and lots of pain. But over time, I became more consistent. And I believe that you will as well if you're not already. So without further ado, let's dive into this video. One of the first mistakes that all new traders make is switching strategies too often. And this, I was stuck in this for a long, long time. I would back test the strategy, get like six months, I would spend 50 hours, 60 hours back testing the strategy, use it live, it would work for a bit, and then maybe have like a, it would go on like a one week losing streak or something, and I would completely scrap the whole strategy and focus on a new strategy. And then I would see, I would be, you know, using one strategy and then it has a losing period and I would see someone else making money and then I would try to like maybe emulate their strategy. And I would just hop from strategy to strategy. I would trade one strategy for like a few weeks and then boom, next strategy, next strategy, next strategy, hopping around. And this is a mistake that I think all new traders make and it's not a strategy. The problem is not the strategy. Every strategy is going to go through a losing period, right? That's inevitable. But what we can do is we can just manage risk through the drawdown and then continue to trade, right? Every strategy for sure is gonna have losing weeks, um, sometimes losing months, but not like big losing months. Um, and then like if it's a good strategy and then uh, expect obviously losing days, and losing weeks. So you just manage your risk during the lo losing days and weeks and then you come out ahead on top later on. So if you're one of those people that had, follows a strategy for a few weeks or a month and then switches strategies, stop. Just give yourself a few months like stay with one strategy get good at that strategy get good at trading it live because it's different from back testing and that's going to go into the second point now the second mistake that most traders make is trading a strategy or just placing trades with live money without back testing or, or knowing their edge it's just a mistake that i think far too many people make like you get in the markets and you're just clicking buttons you think Oh, I know this looks like a good trade. You have to be able to identify and put into words the criteria of what makes that a good trade. And then on top of that, knowing the win rate, the probability of you actually making money, the average you know, stop loss you might need for that kind of trade, the average take profit you might need for that kind of trade, the risk reward ratio for that kind of trade. Instead of just entering a trade, not really knowing where your take profit's gonna be, not really knowing your stop loss is gonna be, and then not really knowing the average win rate of that kind of strategy. That's just gambling. That's entering trades without an edge. And this is this is what far too many traders do. I mean, everyone kind of does this in their first months, right? But the faster you can go from doing that to then back testing and gathering data on a specific edge and then doing it the right way, because the wrong way of back testing would be going ahead and changing up or adjusting micro things here and there you know, to make the trade work. Like you have to be completely objective when you're back testing and that's i think an error that a lot of people make is when you back test you can't just you know say hey oh i'm not gonna i wouldn't have taken this trade even though it lines up with all of the criteria you had in your trading strategy like that's you changing the strategy just to make sure that the back testing scenario looks better and that's worse like i purposely do the opposite i'm i always lean to the the, the side of making the stats look worse than they are. So that way, when I am trading, I know to expect the worst case scenario. And then the worst case scenario might not even be that bad because I was so strict in my back testing that in the real time trading, maybe I trade it even better. And then I don't even get that worst case scenario as opposed to the opposite, which is what far too many people do is they make their back testing look far too good. And then they go ahead and trade and they expect like an 88% win rate with a 1.5 R. And then uh, they go on like a four trade losing streak. And then they give up because they're like, well, that's not possible. I never back tested a four loss losing streak. So, you know, forget it. But that's just because you back tested wrong. That's plain and simple, right? So make sure you enter trades with the edge defined, right? Don't enter any trades if you don't have that edge defined yet. The third mistake that most traders make is not having a trading plan written. I'm not talking about what you think you might need to follow in your head. I'm talking about written. Like I have my trading plan written down. I read it multiple times a day, uh, mandatory at least once before uh, the market opens. But I usually end up reading about like twice a day because I kind of reread it maybe like two times. But it's something that we have to ingrain in ourselves because the trading plan is what makes every trader profitable. You're not gonna be profitable without a trading plan. And the reason being is because it lists out when you should take trades, how many trades a day you're allowed to take, when you need to stop, right? That's how you limit any over trading or over risking. 
have, by having your trading plan saying, hey, I'm only allowed to take two trades a day, or I need to stop after I take two losses. Because I know, I don't know about you, but I've talked about this in videos before, um, I had this problem, you know, if I took two losses in a day, I would go on tilt and then I would be over trading. I would just be taking more setups and then I might even double my size on one of them because I'm like, oh, I got to make that back on this, this next trade. And it's just a slippery slope, never ends well. Um, the odd time you get lucky, but it's a horrible habit to build because if you build that kind of habit, then uh, one day you will just completely blow up, right? There's always a trading day that will blow you up if you do that. So the trading plan, again, lists out the times you're allowed to trade. Say, I'm only allowed to trade 9.30 to 12. I'm not going to take a single trade outside of those times, not a minute outside of those times. I'm always going to trade it within that time. I'm only allowed to take max max this many of entries. After this many losses, stop. After this many wins, stop. Um, all these things. I'm only allowed to trade these specific symbols. You know, my max stop loss is allowed to be X. Um, like that's the amount of money you're allowed to lose. All of these things are written down in the trading plan. And if you don't have a trading plan yet, then what you're gonna to wanna to do is focus on back testing a profitable edge. And once you have the profitable edge, then you'll start to see, okay, when does the edge perform best, right? And you know, what kind of symbols should I use this edge on? When, what kind of symbols should I not use this edge on? And you'll start to fine tune your trading plan, but you can always start with a basic one and then it'll get more specific over time as you're trading live with that profitable edge. So make sure you do focus on building that trading plan. If you have any questions on how to build the trading plan, leave them in the comments down below. I can make a full video on how to do that, but definitely focus on building that trading plan written. The fourth mistake I see a lot of new traders make is not focusing on the higher time frames. So they're taking trades on just the low time frames, just looking at the one minute, the three minute, the five minute, seeing a setup and then taking the setup. And the problem is if you take setups like that without knowing the higher time frame, like you could be taken along into a daily resistance level. That's not going to play out very well. Or you could be taking a short uh, into a daily support level like these things are not ideal of course like you'll take you'll just take losses more often than not if you try to do that so if you just you know do a top-down analysis before you trade so before you trade you mark out some levels or at least know where we are standing uh in the middle like when you're about to take a trade at least know where we're sitting on the four hour the daily or the weekly right one of those one of those at least so you can get kind of a picture of where we're kind of trading around to see you know, the direction we're, we're most likely to go. Because even if the low time frame looks really good, like you, again, like I said, you could be just going right into a, a long, right into a resistance or a short right into a support. The fifth one is gonna be over trading. And uh, this one could take a long time to fix. This going to take a little time to fix. Um, for me personally, it did take a while to fix because what would happen was I would have a winning trade, let's say. And I, this actually happened to me the most. I would make money early on in the day and it would sit on the charts all day uh, because, you know, like you basically got this like good feeling of, oh, wow, like I made money. So, uh, you know, the human mind initially goes to, oh, like the harder I work, the more money I'll make. And that's not the case with trading. So what I would end up doing, let's say, is I would have a winning trade and I would stay on and then see my setup again at lunchtime and then take the trade again and give back all the profits. Um, this one, that took me a long time. I was doing this for like six months. I was profitable, but then I would make money every day in the morning and give it back at lunchtime. And then the odd time, trade the two to 3 p.m. to try to get back to green and then end red. And that's happened a lot of times. I mean, literally green in the morning, stay on all the way till lunchtime, take another trade, go break even or small red, and then uh, see another setup to 3 p.m., take another trade and then end red. And then just be so mad at myself. And that happened for like six months. You know, as fast as you can, I highly suggest going to, uh, making a rule of like two trades max. You know, you could do three trades max, but I would like one, two or three trades max. Put that in your trading plan and if you just stick to that no matter what you do not say take a single entry over that number every single day uh, i promise you you'll get you'll get profitable way faster those are my five mistakes that new unprofitable traders make so you want to avoid those mistakes and solve them as quickly as possible and you'll be well on your way to become a consistently profitable trader that's going to conclude this video subscribe for more videos just like this thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video